Number seven, and I think I've made it to the end of my tracking. I'm waiting on one more fly-in from a special guest artist that I'm very excited about. Um, but beyond that, I'm, I'm pretty much finished. So I figure I'll wrap up some loose ends as far as the recording process went. And then I'll move on and maybe start making some videos on some of my mixing stuff. Not that I really know what I'm doing, but it's starting to shape up and sound good. I actually spent today rough mixing all 12 songs. So we got a full on LP album going on here. So that's exciting. Um, electric guitar. It was, I used it on a couple of tracks, not really as a, a featured instrument at all because I don't really play electric guitar, but for some of the, the more rocky songs, I, I laid down some guitar parts to get a little crunchy action going on, especially for like the choruses to not necessarily be heard, but to bring up the kind of the, the meat of the, the song in the choruses there. So for that stupid simple, I just, you ran through this pedal. Um, so plug in from the guitar. I have a Mexican Strat made in the 90s sometime. Um, I think it might have upgraded pickups, but just, just Strat action. I really, really love that guitar. But like I said, I'm not a guitarist, so I never get it out too often, except when I need it for a weird project like this. But this is the Giggity pedal. It's like a little preamp sort of thing, but really I found it, it kind of makes the guitar when it pl it's plugged straight into the interface, it makes it a lot more believable because I don't have power in my cabin here to plug in amps or anything. Not that I have an amp, but with this pedal, it, it just kind of brings, brings the guitar a little bit more to life. And if you play guitar, this is a really cool pedal anyways, because you can make like a clean Fender sound like a Marshall and kind of vice versa. So good stuff there. Guitars were simple. And like I think I've said before, guitars are just so easy to record because straight into the box, they sound awesome in, in general. You don't have to do any tweaking. There's not any moving the mics and finding the right place. You just play it loud and proud and go to town. So after, after that, or well, the other, the other aspect that I want to talk about is how I ended up recording one of what turned out to be my favorite songs out of the set of 12. Um, I did it live. And at first, I did, I did one song one way, and I believe I did my Neumann kind of out front, in front of my face and, and a little bit further away to kind of catch up, catch my vocals and, and the overall sound. And then I think I used a SM57 close up on my ukulele. Because what I was afraid of and what I had heard is that if you try and block the vocal bleed onto the instrument mic, you can get a more clean sound. Because when you start having phase issues, which is what happens when you set up multiple mics, when you have phase issues and the phasing on the vocal track starts to get weird, it's more noticeable because all of us have spent our entire lives listening to the human voice and it's really easy to tell when something is not quite right. So for, for that one track, I believe I used the Neumann out front for my vocals and then an SM57, which doesn't pick up a lot of outside noise. It only picks up what's right in front of it and close to it. Uh, and I used that on my ukulele. But then for this other song, I was just, you know, trying and trying and trying all these, these different things and different setups. And okay, let's try this mic here and this mic here and this mic here and up and down. And since I only have two channels, I am lucky that I don't have many, many options. I can't have a three mic set up or a two mic and a plug set up. That's a blessing, but there's still a lot you can do with two channels. But what I actually ended up doing for this one song, and it came out fantastic, is I used my Neumann on my ukulele, just like normal. And I used my SM7 on my voice, just like normal. And what do you know? The sound was great. Uh, what I did do to match it up a little bit better is in my um, DAW editing program, I blew up the wave, just the wave pictures on the screen, kind of kind of big, and found, zoomed in so you could see the actual wave happening. And then I lined up the two tracks so that when I started playing, both of the waves were happening at the same time. And this brings at least the ukulele in phase 
or the vocal end of phase, depending what what you're doing. But um, since the vocal mic kind of rejects the ukulele sound, I didn't notice really any big problems with the phase. I think I could have left it unedited and not moved the, the file at all and still had a better sound than the song I did with the other version, which still sounds all right, but it's kind of two contrasting ways of recording that live. But this definitely kind of spoke to me more, and I, um, if I ever have to do this again, which I'm sure I will, this is definitely the setup I will start with. So now I'm moving on from recording. I think I'm probably to the point where I can take down my little studio setup with all the blankets on the walls and move my little orange divider off out of the way and pack all my stuff up for next time. Um, and now I'm just, just on to mixing, getting, getting that all dialed in and I'll spend another couple of videos talking about my setup down at the house for mixing and how I'm gonna approach it and some of the things I've done to make the track sound the way they do, which is pretty all right. I'm kind of a picky guy, but it's shaping up and it's exciting to hear the songs sounding more or less like I imagine them in my head and they're kind of, you know, they got some, they got some kick, which is, which is really, really cool. But I'll see you guys on the other side. Um, here's a lead out with a lovely sample preview of one of the songs. Darkness a heart 